Okay, boys and girls, get ready for Uncle Bill and Aunt Susan's Longhorn Highlights for Friday, October 26th against the Snowflake Lobos at Longhorn Stadium. Pay attention because things are going to move quickly. Payson stopped the Lobos' limited offensive attack on their first possession and proceeded to dominate the game early. Playing with passion and a will to win, the Longhorns ran a flawless first drive to take the early 7-0 lead. The defense clamped down on an offense that tried everything to fool the horns, but the Payson boys would have none of it. Then with Ridge Hallinar running a very efficient second drive, the horns set up the next score at the end of the first quarter with this pass to Shane Key. Moments later, Alenar took it six yards and extended into the end zone, and it was 14 to nothing. Back on defense, the pass was something that Payson just did not allow on Friday night. They were flying around and stopping it with clean, hard hits. And the Horns continued to control the game with great offensive line play, allowing an array of Payson running backs to eat up big chunks of yardage with Nick Alexander scoring his second touchdown of the night with little time left in the first half. That put the horns up 21 to zip. Payson's defense was more than equal to the task against Snowflake. Matt Reedhead is a fine running back and he got some good yardage. And he scored the Lobos first TD with a little time left in the half. But compared to the horns running game, Snowflake seemed one dimensional and they were forced into mistakes. Here, Hallinar draws them off on a fourth and one to get a first down. Then Ridge picks his way through for 11 yards and another first down. That set up a pass play to Tyler Savage near the end of the first half. You decide if this was pass interference or not. At any rate, the score at the half was 21-7 Payson. The Horns came out in the second half, determined to keep up the level of intensity that they showed in the first half. Tyler Savage was all over quarterback Nick Reedhead on this one. And Shane Key unloaded on Logan Rogers on this incomplete pass. This frustrated the Lobo bench, and the officials called an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on him. That penalty killed a drive as this completed pass fell way short of first down territory. Back on offense, the line continued to open huge holes for Brandon Alexander and provided protection for Hallinar as he connected with Shane Keith in the end zone. A fine catch by Shane as he showed great concentration. And the Longhorns continued to raise the level of excitement. Tripping up Reedhead for a loss. And Hallinar broke up a long pass attempt as he batted the ball down. It was this total defensive pressure that forced Snowflake into a terrible play call. B.J. Hill was in perfect position to pick up Nick Reedhead's pass, and B.J. took it 36 yards down to the Lobos three. From there, it was pretty simple. Nick Goodman took it in and the route was on. Snowflake made a valiant effort at a comeback, but Payson was able to stop most of the big plays with some great defensive effort. And a gang of Longhorns stopped the run here. Meanwhile, the defensive line applied great pressure on the quarterback and he went down, which evidently upset his timing and concentration. Just the opposite when Payson got the ball back, it took one play to get into the end zone again. Eleanor found Troy Brown wide open and he ran it to the end zone untouched 
for pacing six score of the night. Back on defense, Ridge Hallinar manhandled Snowflake's Devin Peterson, another fine running back. And finally in the fourth quarter, quarterback Reed Head connected with Cody Overly on a fine pass play, and the Lobos got their second TD of the night. They then tried an onside kick, but Ridge Hallinar, looking like the fine baseball catcher that he is, smothered the ball like an errant pitch. Back on defense, the firm of Hill, Carlin, and Herford sniffed out a reverse and stopped it cold. And the Payson boys put the quarterback on the ground again. Back on offense, new quarterback Zach Brooks handed off to Cliff Lopez. He carried it 37 yards to pay dirt as the Longhorns continued to confound the Lobo defense. Josh Fruin made it seven for seven for the night in point afters, and it was 49 to 13. Then Payson kicked off and Logan Rogers had a little problem getting the handle, but he broke down the sideline on what looked like a TD run. But kicker Josh Fruin, although getting a face mask call, stopped him. And the network radio guys were further impressed when Payson's new quarterback came out. Our, our first, second, and third, and fourth, and, and fifth, and sixth string quarterbacks just weren't getting the job done. So they, they put me in there, managed the clock, I gave a pretty inspirational speech in the huddle, and just told him to just jump, on, jump on the king's back and I'll carry him to the promise land. Matt Wilson picked up about three yards and gave coach Josh Anderson another possible weapon in his ground arsenal. So that was it. Payson beat Snowflake. Josh Fruin was honored with a ride and he reflected on his night. Brian had good snaps the whole night, and Rich got good holds, and I just did good enough to get him in. Now, what are you talking about the uh, touchdown saving tackle that you made? Oh. Yeah, I just ran by me, and I tried to grab anything I can, and happened to grab his face mask, but got him down. Now, that's where the kickers do more than kick the ball, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. B.J. Hill talked about his interception, the game, and the Longhorns' future. The guy on the receiving end kept running, and he never even turned his head. So I was really the only one that seen the ball. And the defensive line put some pressure on the quarterback, which kind of helped me. And I was just right there at the right place, at the right time. What do you think the difference was between you guys and Snowflake? Tonight? Yeah. Uh, we were just overall a better team. Speed, wanting it more, uh, everything, strength, play calling, mistakes, penalties, passion, everything. And I think our team's a lot better team this week than we were last week or the week before. We're a lot better team. So no matter who you play next week, you're looking forward to it? Yep. We're going to get a win. The 3A state championship brackets are set for the first round, and Payson will entertain Parker at Longhorn Stadium on Friday, November 2nd at 7 o'clock. We're sure the team would love to see everyone in Payson at that game. Friday night was a beautiful thing. Uh, you know, like I told the boys, we, we were peaking at the right time. The last three games, I thought we did really well. Despite the loss to Blue Ridge, I thought we played really hard and did the right things. Haven't had a turnover in three games, you know. Big difference compared to Sholo and Allen Valley where we were putting the ball on the ground an awful lot and losing it and making some mistakes. We're not making those, those mistakes. We just came out and said, hey, you know, can you hang with us? We're tired of spotting Sholo points and then spotting Round Valley points and then deciding to play because those are good teams, obviously, and you can't spot anybody points in the East region. Going 0-3 to start the region actually made us better. I mean, we have we have stepped up to the plate instead of hanging our heads, you know, and in times of trouble, you either get bitter or you get better. So I'm real proud of these kids, ones that have stuck it out this far in the season are playing hard. They don't know the meaning of quit, realized that they still have, they still have a big future ahead of them. So they regrouped, came through, and uh, sure enough, here we are in perfect position for the playoffs. When we're up 42 to seven, and midway through the third quarter, um, I had bigger plans than Snowflake at the time. I wasn't interested in Snowflake anymore. 
Uh, and I, I don't mean to be egotistical, but obviously I need my starters for the playoffs. We want to make a good deep run into the playoffs. That game was in hand, and my backups went in and scored on their starters. And they had a hard time getting the ball in on my backups anyway, just because everyone's playing hard and everyone's getting a lot of playing time on varsity anyway. So as far as running the score up, sure, could have. Could have done that easily, but not interested. And I want to take care of my starters. That was basically the simple end of it right there. The PowerPoints is an excellent system to get the best teams into the state playoffs to make the state playoffs a lot more competitive. You know, you play the games, you have a tough schedule. Uh, other people's opinions, like in the Arizona Republic, doesn't really, doesn't hold water. After the season's over, the PowerPoints tell you exactly where you're sitting, how you're rated, and you know, and what you've done for yourself for the year. So, I'm glad to have the PowerPoints here. I think it's a great system, and uh, you know, I'm glad we shocked even our own fans to have that home game and to be where we're at at number six seed in the playoffs just because how the PowerPoints work. Re region champs are automatically the top four seeds. So that bumped us down to six because Winslow and Coolidge were behind us in PowerPoints. But they're region champs, so they move up, which is good for them. That's how it should be. Playing a good team, Parker, I don't care what region you're in, what seed you are, uh, or anything like that. When you make the playoffs, you're a good team. And we need to be ready week after week. Uh, continuing in the playoffs, right now our Right now our record's zero and zero, and it needs to be that way in our minds, and we just need to, to, start, to start the second season on a good note, and it's good to have that home game first.